Hi, I'm Oblissi. Hey, if you enjoy the video, consider clicking like, subscribe, bell notification, and the join button. Uh, becoming a channel member is only $4.99 a month. It really, really helps me out, and you get a bunch of perks like these badges for how long you've been a member for. Uh, you get these emojis for my live stream chats, and you get access to my videos when I upload them instead of when I release them. So thanks so much, and enjoy the video. Hey guys, a quick note. This method is really useful and good and cool and beautiful, but it only works on Game Boy Advanced, uh, Game Boy Advanced SP, and um, Game Boy Player. It does not work on Nintendo DS, Nintendo DS Lite, or Game Boy Micro, as of right now, as of this video. Thanks. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you a new breeding RNG method for Pokemon Emerald. There's two sections to this. This is going to be the first video, and it's going to be just on egg PID RNG. If you don't know what egg PID RNG means, all it means is um, the shininess value, basically. It it's, it's determines four different things. It determines shininess, nature, gender, ability. Um, and... The reason this is such a good method is because it ties the egg RNG to PokéNav calls, so you can actually see what frame you hit. If you're familiar with uh, a breeding RNG right now for shininess, um, what you have to do basically is breed Spindas, verify Spindas, uh, what frame you hit by using Spindas spot pattern on this tool right here, Spinda Painter. So if I go to uh, Spinda Painter, verify it using this tool by matching these things up. And um, um, to see what frame you hit, and then doing that until you get a shiny Spinda. Then once you get the shiny Spinda, keep your same calibration and swap the two Pokemon out um, for something else. This method is much faster, much easier, and is much more versatile. So there's probably going to be three videos on this. One for PID, one for IVRNG, and then one for another thing it's good for, which is pretty unique to this game. Or to this method, I would say, for Emerald version. So, before the video actually starts, one more caveat, or not caveat, but um, basically I want to thank uh, Larvesta for showing me this method, uh, and I want to thank Koishi for, I think, discovering the method, and I'm not sure if Koishi made this the tool that you're going to need for it, or someone else did, but if someone else did, thank you, uh, otherwise thank you to Koishi as well for that. Um, I, ca I can't remember off the top of my head, I'm sorry, but um, thank you to the Japanese RNG community for showing me this tool and uh, giving it, like, showing it to the West, basically. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So, a few things uh, to note of this um, RNG. So, in-game, what you're going to need are a Pokemon who has the Lightning Rod ability. So, I've got my Electric here. Uh, a Pokemon with Flame Body, just to hatch the eggs faster. Uh, a Pokemon with Fly. Oh, with Fly, so you can uh, fly places. And then you're going to need the two Pokemon you want to breed. So, I have a Ditto and a Wingle. Now, again, this video won't cover IV RNG. However, if you're going to be aiming for a specific IV spread, I highly, highly recommend two things for the IV RNG. Know exactly both Pokemon's IVs, and remember the and like find the spread beforehand, because um, you need to know which order you put them in. That's very important. Okay. Other than that, uh, in game as well, you're going to need a a bunch of not a bunch, but you're going to need some max repels. Uh, this is because they count 250 steps. It's just important for keeping track of things. Um, you're also going to need to have every single trainer in the PokéNav uh, match call feature registered. No trainers matter uh, bef uh, until you get to Aroma Lady, whatever her name is. This lady, she's the first one that matters. Everyone else here is automatic. You you get them. You get all the Elite Four members, all the gym leaders, and stuff like that automatically. Once you get to Aroma Lady Rose, they matter. But uh, you know you have the max number of Pokémon trainers registered by having the. Uh, number of trainers registered as 83 as you can see that that's what I have now if you have like 72 and you don't know which ones you missed etc this website here is very good for helping um, it is in Japanese however it doesn't matter because they use pictures so you can see it's all of these all these pictures show exactly which trainers you've registered um, if you're very thorough and you battle all of the trainers you probably have got most of them registered however the ones you're gonna there's basically two techniques for checking a I'm walking up to them, and if they look at you, and then they don't battle you, you've probably got them registered. However, um, there's a lot of trainers, like this kid on Route 102, who you won't have registered, because you battled him before you've got 
the PokéNav, and if you never talked to him again, you never would have registered him. So this guy in 102, um, this girl, uh, and then this rich boy, uh, this girl as well. You all, pr and then a bunch of people in the bug catch it in the bug forest or whatever it's called, um, Petalburg Woods. Uh, you might not have registered just because you haven't um, you haven't spoken to them since you've defeated them in battle. So make sure to do that. And again, you can use this list. It's not too difficult to use again because there's a bunch of pictures. And if you know Hoenn well, it should be very easy to find where it is. They even tell you the route. Uh, for wherever their roots and stuff like that. So that's just an important thing to keep in mind. Okay, uh, I believe that's all you're going to need in-game. Uh, and you're also going to need to make sure you're saved in this exact spot. It's five steps away from the daycare lady. So I would save here if I was you. Out of game, you're going to need this tool here. I'm going to post in the description a translation picture. Um, as well as in this video, do my best to explain to you what all of these are because it's only in Japanese. You cannot get it in English. You're also going to need Eon Timer, and that's it. You can use Poke Finder as well, or RNG Reporter, as like a backup thing, um, because it does, this tool essentially does the same thing as the um, Egg PID tab here, but um, they work a bit differently, and I, I only use Poke Finder sometimes just to compare, so we'll go over stuff in a second. So for this Japanese tool, let's go over what this stuff is. First of all, up here, that just closes the tool. Don't use that one. Up here, this is this says Emerald Call. Um, this is basically if you don't have a specific trainer here, you can uncheck or check them. By default, everyone is checked. I highly recommend getting every single trainer registered. It gives you more opportunities for calls to be more identified. Just use this one, guys, okay? I promise. Just make sure they're all registered and use that website I showed you in advance. All right, cool. This is your frame range. This is basically just how long you're willing to wait. Um, I usually set this between 0 and 20,000. You cannot use battle videos for PID RNG. You cannot use them. So don't even... So I, I don't really want to wait more than 15 or 20 minutes, and I doubt you do either. Okay. Uh, this is your target frame. You put this in when you find a target frame, and then this is plus however many or minus however many frames you want from your target frame. So like if I hit this, it'll you'll see what this button does in a minute. I'll, I'll explain this in detail. This is how much the two Pokemon like each other. Um, the top one on the scroll bar is they don't like each other very much. This one is that they like each other a little bit. And then this one is that they like each other a lot. I think I'm going to be having the one where they don't like each other very much. Um, this button here is for the ability Lightning Rod. Make sure you have a Lightning Rod Pokemon as the lead of your party and make sure you check this off. You want a Lightning Rod. It's really easy to get Manectric or... Um, Oh, man. Uh, 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 whatever. <laughs> no, Electric or Manectrix. Uh, uh, it's really easy to get them with Lightning Rod. So, just get a Pokemon with Lightning Rod. Uh, these two buttons, I don't... Uh, you just don't check them off. <laughs> um, this is for your Trainer ID and your Secret ID. If you want a Shiny, you need to know both of them. This button here, uh, check it off if you only are... Uh, if you only want a Shiny Pokemon. Like, this, if checking this makes basically will only display shiny Pokemon. Um, this here lets you select a specific Pokemon. Um, you have to know their name in Japanese. Um, you can just find it on Bulbapedia if you want. And I believe it only even will have Pokemon that are capable of coming out from eggs. So I don't think, like, Azumarill is in this list because Azumarill can't come out of an egg, if you understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to uncheck that because I don't care about the specific Pokemon. Then you can check this off um, for if you're looking for a specific ability. So this is ability one and ability two. Checking this off will actually cause um, the ability to be that is displayed to be the proper ability. So, uh, for example, Electric can either have Lightning Rod or Static. Checking having Electric selected here in the dropdown. Then checking this off will display static or um, uh, whatever the other ability is, a uh, lightning rod. Uh, but unchecking it will just say ability 1 or ability 2. And you can find out ability 1 versus ability 2 by just going on to like the Gen 3 Cerebi page and seeing which order the ability is in here, right? So Slugma, for example, Magma Armor is ability 1 and Flame Body is ability 2. And you can figure that out very easily using Cerebi. So I'm going to uncheck this because I do not care what my Wingle's ability is. 
then this last one is just if you want male or female and uh, you only this will only even show up as like this is just filters for what you're looking for specifically um, again I don't care about my the gender of the swingle so I'm gonna leave all of that unchecked personally this button here um, this lets you highlight a specific trainer that called you so you can find them easier we'll go over this more in detail um, this button will display results, but we'll go over that. We'll do that in a second. Then this is your calibration value. It is not the same as the old calibration value with the spin die. It's basically the same idea, but it's a little bit different. Basically, this number is the default amount of frames that are advanced just by uh, existing, almost. Uh, and it's going to be either 21 if you have a Latios or Latias roaming, and it's going to be a 20 if you have nobody roaming. Um, so I have a Latios roaming, so it's going to be 21. Okay. So. I believe that is everything. So now we're going to want to find a shiny spread. So I'm going to hit search. I've got no shiny. Now we have to explain another detail about this. <laughs> so. If you remember the old method of egg RNG, well, it's not too, I don't want to get too into this, but basically, this 21 is the default number of frames you're going to advance. Again, Latios or Latios roaming means it's 21. If they're not roaming, you've caught them, you killed them, it's 20. You can increase this number, however, you can only do advancements basically in increments of like 4 or 3, and so I'll explain this. Basically, this advancement, uh, going into the bag and then leaving the bag, advances this by three frames. But, right, uh, but after you leave this menu, you get one frame advance. Um, but the one frame advance only happens after leaving the menu, after doing an advancement of three. So going up here and then backing out, that's four advancements. But just closing this from scratch is no advancements. But opening this up, closing this, closing this, that's four. Opening it up, closing it, closing it, and closing it again is four. Or if you just go in, go back out, that's three. Go in, go back out, that's another three. So the way I like to do it is um, search through once an increment of four, and then subsequently increments of three. So I'll go increase this by four. And I'll search, and I have two shiny frames here. Um, this one is an adamant frame, I use this a lot. And then this one is uh, another frame, I don't even actually know that nature off the top of my head in Japanese. Um, but we can see if we like it or not. So, what you do is type in your target frame there, so 4665, that's my target frame. Hit this button, which will make it a range of plus 100, minus 100 of this uh, frame. Uncheck shiny only, so you can display all the results. And uncheck all of your parameters at that point if you set any other ones, just so you can see every single result instead of only your filtered one, and find the frame. So, the reason I'm not going to be aiming for this frame is if you take a look here. Um, let's take a look at all these columns. So, this is your target frame, or like this is the frame you're, this is basically just the frame. What frame is it? This is how many away you are from your target frame. Uh, I This one doesn't matter. This is if an egg is in. If an egg is set to be received on that frame, um, uh, this is the PID of what that egg is. Now this is huge because you can know the PID of the egg beforehand. So what I'm going to do is a quick example of this. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but um, an egg isn't shiny or not until it's hatched, right? So if I have an egg that's not shiny in this game, but this PID here would be shiny in another game, it will, if it's traded as an egg, it will hatch shiny. So what I can do is copy this PID, right? So you can just like right click and copy it. Go into Poke Finder, click TID SID, right? Do the RS tab, Gen 3 RS. Make sure dead battery is clicked. Paste your PID here and hit search. And then you'll find a frame where you can get a TID and SID that when traded to it, it will be uh, hatched shiny. So what you can do with that basically is right get this rng know this pid it would be impossible right to like know this pid like you um usually beforehand um because you would hatch it and it wouldn't be shiny and you, you would never be sure do you know what i'm saying um and so you could trade it over 
and then uh, uh, you can R you can RNG a trainer ID in Ruby and Sapphire, which is extremely easy to do, and then um, and then it will be shiny uh, once you hatch it in that game. So that's just a cool thing to know. Sorry, <laughs> a little bit rambly there, but then this is the Nature's tab. You have to know what they are in Japanese. It's not a big deal. You can go to Bulbapedia and look them up. This is if it's ability one or two. This column, I would say, does not matter. This here is the person who calls you on the Pokemon app. So you, we're going to set this up so the same step you take to generate the egg, because as we all know, an egg is generated 255 steps, um, or 256 steps. Sorry, it's the the final. It's zero to 255, but it's 256 steps, uh, basically. Um, the final step. Well, because zero is not. It doesn't matter. Point is, the fin it's the final step will be both a phone call, because from a fresh restart, every 10 steps you'll get a phone call. So we're going to make it so that 10th step is both the egg generation and the phone call. So you'll be able to tell if you hit the correct frame via this phone call. And so that's what this caller tab uh, uh, tab is for. Now you're going to have to do some mini translation from English to Japanese. Luckily, I'm, I'm going to provide a document that will show you all of the English names versus the Japanese names. Uh, in the description and in this video I'm going to explain to you how I figure it out because despite the fact that I can read Japanese these names are not the same um, and so I'm going to also explain to you why I'm not going to be aiming for this um, tab so if we look I get no phone call here that's a little hard so if I get no phone call it could be the target frame yay if I get no phone call but it could also be this frame or it could be this frame it's a little bit difficult to tell right um, now the plus side is if I get no phone call and there's no egg generation that means it's not the guaranteed frame because the no phone call would mean this frame or the no phone call could be in this frame but I, I don't like that it's not too easy to identify so we're gonna go through 0 to 20,000 again and we're gonna search uh, up three more we get nothing let's search uh, and we find one on 4561 we'll hit up Uncheck shiny only. Generate, and we'll find it. So this should be a much better frame. I've hit this frame before. <laughs> so as we can see, uh, this is the trainer that will call us if we are on the correct frame. And then when an egg generates and that trainer calls us, that means um, uh, that means that it's uh, good for us. Because uh, if this guy calls and we don't get an egg, that means um, that we're one frame late or that we could be even seven frames early. But... There's basically a lot of different phone calls with a lot of different variations to give us information. So, once we've got our target frame picked, go into Eon Timer. Make sure your lag, unless you know it, is reset. Set your pre-timer to zero, uh, 5,000 and set your target frame. So, once we've all got all that set, we can begin. So, I would recommend saving here in the spot and actually um, this is an important thing to note uh, if you're gonna notice right here um, I'm playing on a GameCube and you're gonna and I actually might this is actually so important I'm gonna add this into the beginning of the video as well this method really only reliably works on a Game Boy Advanced a Game Boy Advance SP or a game uh, Game Boy player for the Nintendo GameCube this is not reliable on any DS that plays GBA games or the Game Boy Micro. Right now, as I make this video, it's not reliable on those systems. So, yeah. Oh, and then this is an Everstone tab. You don't need uh, Everstone uh, for this method. Personally, I don't find that you need it. And Everstone just makes things a little bit more unstable. So I would recommend just not using an Everstone. So don't worry about that, in my opinion. So once we've got all that saved, go into your bag. Use your Max Repel and walk up to the counter. This will use five steps up. So leave your two Pokemon. Again, if you're doing IV RNG, the order that you put them in matters, so make sure you put them in the correct order. Once you've put them in, walk out. And what I like to do is just double check that I've got the correct... So they don't seem to like each other much. That's the correct setting on here. Sometimes I'm unsure of if it's going to be that one or not. Uh, and then just bike around until your um, uh, repel runs out. So normally what we do is we just deposit the Pokemon and then max the repel out. 
uh, max repel, and that would leave us with 250 steps, so we only have to take five more steps. However, since we took five steps before giving them the Pokemon, that means we have 10 steps to take left. So once the repel wears out, hit B to close that, and then immediately go and fly um, to Evergrande City, the top part of it. Save. And we're going to do the Eon Timer now, so start your Eon Timer, and when it counts, when it, when it counts down, reset. So just get to the thing as fast as possible, and then run down here. And this is going to be nine steps under this archway. Now, even if you've got no advances to make here in this column... Oh, bring up the pause menu anyway. It won't dropping. It won't give you any advancements, and um, um, it prevents random frame advancements. Now, the way we're going to do this is if I take my calculator here, uh, our we have to do thirty-one advances, right? So we take thirty-one because of our calibration. We're we're already just immediately we've done twenty-one advances just because of Latios is roaming. If Latios wasn't roaming, it'd be minus twenty here. So I'm subtracting 20, so we only do 10 advancements. That just means going into the bag menu three times. One, so that's three advancements. Two, that's another three advancements. Three, that's another three advancements. So this is for a total of nine advancements. Our last advance is going to be this closing this menu and taking a step. So I'm going to hold down. I'm holding down right now. When I hit B, I'll take my final step and do an advancement at the same time. So I get a call. So I'm getting a call from Jackson. Okay. So it's important to remember Jackson. This is who I get a call from. Okay. So here's how we figure this out, right? First of all, go into your Pokenav. So scroll down until you can find Jackson. Now, if you're in a Japanese game, you just got to line it up who it is. Like, you just have to look on, you know, who did I get? However, this is not Japanese, so I'm going to show you guys how I figure it out. Because, again, even though I can read Japanese, their names are not the same, right? These are all just translated English names. Jackson. So we have Pokemon Ranger Jackson, Route 119. This is easy to figure out. So Because what we can do is go to this website, right? Click to 119. And we're going to know it's Jackson because uh, I believe this person has done them in the same order. So if we take a look here, um, they very, I think, oh no, no, they've done it by root order. Well, we can check something here. So here it might be hard to know. Okay, so no, it's actually not even hard to know. So this is great. So root 119. Route 119 only has two person, two persons, two people here, right? Route 119 has this girl and this boy. Jackson is a boy. Very easy for me to figure out. The only other Route 119 person is Pokemon. Like, see, I have no other. You can look on. Um, you can look right here for the route, right? There's, there's no other. Um, there's going to be no other Route 119 people other than these two. I got a call from Jackson, um, so that means that Jackson is this name in Japanese. Let me just copy that. So. Okay, I could be as early as 16 frames early. Um, and now a great thing to check for here is if I click this button, right? I'll scroll down to their name in Japanese. I know um, the Pokemon Rangers are all in a clump here. You can tell they're all the same here. So this is the one I got. I hit OK. Then I hit Generate again. And now Jackson's name is going to be highlighted in this program, as you can see. Boom, right there. Boom. So ja I could also be this late. So there's no real way to know... I could be 19 frames late, or I could be uh, 16 frames early. So, there's not too many ways to know, so what we can do is... One of the ways we can check is, one of the, the Jacksons actually has an egg. So if there's an egg there, I was 16 frames early. So there's an egg, an egg there. There's no other Jacksons on this whole plus... Oh... 
Yeah, there's no other Jacksons on this whole other list. So, uh, and I don't think this one has an egg. So, I was 16 frames early. So, what I can do is go into here, type uh, what frame I hit. 4, 5, 6. Nope, 4, 5, 4, 5. Really? Hmm, funny. Uh, and hit update. And so, I'll get a lag here. And then we just try again. You see how easy that was to verify? Extremely easy. And, check this out. I could have, if I wanted to, right, left that egg there, copied this, and found a shiny frame for this adamant frame. It would be, that's how easy that is. You see what I'm saying? So, if I wanted a shiny, I could have, and then RNG to trainer ID to make it shiny in a ruby version, right? So, anyway, we're just giving another go with our new updated lag. So, we're going to be doing the same amount of advancements and all that kind of stuff. run down to this archway that's nine steps do my advancements that's three six nine I've done nine advancements now closing this menu will do my tenth advancement because closing that menu after going into the bag is one advancement and so when the clock gets closer I'm gonna hold down to take my step downwards now again you're not always gonna have to do this process of the way I found the trainer because I'm gonna make a list of all of the trainer names comparing them uh, in Japanese and English, and I'm going to do it on a Google Doc. If anyone would want to do it uh, and um, another game, uh, you can DM me on Discord, and I'll add it to the Google Doc as well. I haven't made it yet as of this video, but trust me, it will be out. Okay, so we're getting down to five seconds, so I'm going to hold down and hit B as the timer ends. We got Winston, okay? So, go into my Pokenav again, check Winston. That's a rich boy, I believe, right? So we have Winston... We can go to route. Uh, we can scroll all the way back up on this website. Go to route 104. I believe Winston's the only boy we register on this route. Yeah. So Winston is this name. So let's see. So I was two frames late. Not bad at all, I would say. Um, you can see it's the same names there. Okay. So we can type it in. Uh, you don't have to do. The calibration when you're this close if you really don't want to. In fact, I doubt it's going to be correct there, So, but we could try it again anyway. Uh, this time I'm going to pause before the timer runs out. I don't think I have anything else to explain in regards to this type of RNG process. So I'm going to just do my advancements in front of you, and I'm going to pause the video three uh, until it gets to like five seconds. And I pause. All right, here we go. All right, I got a call from Timothy. Haven't received that call before. That's both good and bad news. So let's get to uh, Timothy. Uh, I shouldn't do that much. Route 115. So we can scroll to that route. I don't think the old guy is Timothy, but we could see. Uh, I guess Timothy is the old guy. Because the other one is... And another way to check this is I bet you could find Yeah, I think we could find him here. So let's see. Oh no. Ah uh, yeah, yeah, the other guy is a black belt, so 
So yeah, yeah, this is Black Belt and this is Expert. Expert is the old guy. It's just Timothy's a weird. I don't know why I think Timothy's a weird name for an old guy, but whatever. So I was only one frame early there. You don't really have to do any calibration when you're one frame early. It's just kind of a matter of, you know, that's well, well, well within human error. So. And again, if I had gone up to here, uh, I would have had an egg, and it would have been. Uh, I believe that's bold in Japanese. I'm not positive. The, the nature I'm aiming for is sassy. I'm not really. Uh, looking for a specific, like, I just want to kind of show off this uh, feature, you know what I mean? Here we go. Uh, I got Black Belt Timothy again. So, in odd instances like this, what I could do is just increase this frame by one if I really want. And I'm going to give that a whirl. Because I was one frame late two times when I felt like I was exactly on the timer. And so, you don't do this every time, and if this, you know... Oops, I didn't reset. So you don't do this every time, and this is just like kind of... Like just like a way I've learned to adjust sometimes. Because going uh, up and down a frame is... Um, using the lag feature is very, very finicky sometimes. So, And again, it's already within human error, so it's like not even necessarily one, um, like a real thing, <laughs> I would say almost. So, yeah, to explain what I was doing, I hit this frame uh, several times in a row. So what I'm going to be doing now is, instead of adjusting the lag, I'm going to make my target frame uh, this frame, hoping I'm one frame early again and end up on my exact frame. That's just my plan right now. Okay. All right, we got Jeffrey. Uh, I sort of preemptively know that Jeffrey is already the guy we're looking for. We can find... Uh, I might have passed him. Nope, there's Jeffrey Bug Maniac, Route 120. So we can do what we've done every time. Go to Route 120. So on Route 120, there's only two people. We know this is uh, the one we're looking for um, because um, this guy here is a bird trainer. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, but you can look on... Um, it's it's pretty easy again. You just go to Bulbapedia, double check what kind of trainer is Jeffrey, like which one is he on the route, etc, etc. You can find that kind of stuff out. So if I have an egg, that means I'm... Exactly. So uh, I have an egg, if you notice. I have two of these Mikio frames, which is Bugcatcher Jeffrey. Um, one frame late would have been I don't have a egg, but since I have an egg and I got a call from the right person, I've almost certainly got my shiny wingle in the here. Now, if you're going to do IV RNG abuse, um, you save before receiving it. But since I'm not abusing IV RNGs for this wingle, I'm going to receive the egg and then I'm going to just kind of go. And I'm going to record the entire hatching process, even though I might speed it up. I technically didn't even show me receiving the egg. Hope that doesn't bother too many people. Okay, so my egg's about to hatch. It's almost 100% chances it's shiny. So there's our shiny Wingle, and it's going to be sassy natured, as the program predicted, with ability 2. I don't even know if Wingle has two abilities in this uh, game. But I'll nickname it first. Greener. There you go, easy money. A sassy nature, as I said, and keen eyes the ability. Don't know if that's ability one or two. And it knows fly, which is pretty cool. And it's a female gender, which it wouldn't predict because you can't... Uh, I didn't pick Winkle as the Pokemon there. 
So um, that's all I have to say in regards to the PID uh, version of this method. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I hope you guys find much success in getting many shiny eggs and Pokemon Emerald. Till next video, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I just want to thank my channel members so much. You guys are amazing. Without this kind of support, I wouldn't be able to put out the videos I do, and I wouldn't be able to stream as frequently. Um, thanks so much. If you want to consider becoming a member, just click the join button underneath this video or uh, at my channel page. Um, it's only $4.99 a month. It really helps me out. Um, I'm extremely uncomfortable doing these kinds of plugs, but I'm doing it anyway because the money helps. And uh, if you can't or don't want to, don't feel bad. I'm just asking because, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. You're all amazing. Uh, see you next video.
And a special shout out to Acroma and Super Saiyan, my Blist God tier members. You guys are amazing and your generosity is unbelievable. Thanks, guys.